The Susan Brenda Show is a radio show online broadcasted on YouTube across the United States and globally. The show features guests who speak about health, spirituality, entertainment, and a host of subjects to enlighten people across the nation. Listen to the show that empowers women and men alike and highlights those who have made a difference. Ask yourself, are you living the life you desire or a life of default and settling for less? Lifestyle Empowerment Coaching is an effective process to support individuals in creating something new and beneficial. For more than 25 years, Rhonda Farah, author, speaker, and Lifestyle Empowerment Coach, has been doing just that. Contact her to receive a 30-minute complimentary sample session at www.helpmerondanow.com. That's www.helpmerondanow.com. I'm Susan Brender, and this is The Susan Brender Show. You know, we have a guest who has been on our show so many times, and every time she comes on, she gives us such inspiration and talks about things that one can relate to. Now, today she's going to talk about the lessons that we have learned and this global health crisis that is really a pandemic. And she says it contains many lessons. So I want to welcome to the show Rhonda Farah, who is an, um, an amazing, I, I call her amazing. I think she's the newest person around. So welcome to the show, Rhonda, and how are you? I'm well, Susan. Thank you so much for having me on the show again, and thank you so much for that spectacular introduction. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here and doing these shows with you. And yes, we are going to talk about lesson. The topic of our program this evening or this afternoon is, have we learned the lesson? That's a wonderful question. Has the audience experienced in this particular time, which is a very, very difficult time for so many people, and have they learned the lessons? That's what you want to know. And what is the greatest lesson from this pandemic, uh, Rhonda? What, what do you think? Well, let me let me just back up one second. First of all, when I ask, have we learned the lesson individually as well as collectively? And as you and I have discussed previously on other shows, all of us individually and collectively call everything forward to learn lessons about ourselves, about our relationships, about our purpose, and whether we believe that or not, we call it forward. And then we get to decide what to do about it. And Susan, it's extremely important and extremely true that every moment is teaching us something. In other words, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And every moment is indeed teaching us something of what we are called to do. And this global health crisis uh, is no exception and does contain many lessons. And one of the biggest lessons is that we are shifting individually and as a world. There's a story unfolding. It's been unfolding for some time. I mean, listeners, look back in your lives. Have you not had something you knew that you should take care of or otherwise, yet you did not, and you mm -hmm. called a lesson forward? You called something to learn what you needed to take care of because it's our story. And that needs our participation in order to be fully written individually. You know, and let me interrupt you for a second. And, you know, you're talking about this pandemic and the, the things that people kind, kind of think about. Now, how can we meaningfully and positively contribute to the shift that our world is being called to experience? Number one is to become awakened, to become awakened to what's happening in the world and it's happening to us and it's happening for us uh, for me when when I ask myself what is the greatest lesson from this pandemic and I encourage listeners to do the same for me it's, it's both personal and professional I'm having more clarity with respect to my purpose with respect to my relationships um, with respect to what I'm doing and how I'm doing it professionally a lot of it is being confirmed and a lot of it is being expanded upon. There's more clarity with respect to my own wants, hopes, and expectations. Again, personally and professionally. And right. 
the biggest lesson that we learn from not only this pandemic, but the biggest lesson that we learn from whatever, whatever we call forward in our life is that we have a choice to come out better than we are now. Not by chance, but by choice. It's our yeah. choice. So so do you feel that there's a need for an awakening at this time? And if so, what should we do about it? Well, we are becoming awakened whether we like it or not. The, I, I, my, it's, it's a wake-up call from the universe. And I personally am taking the universe up on her wake-up call. And I invite listeners to do the same and to understand that the world is shifting. And, and this is what I mean by shifting. I mean that the shift from just not this mental transactional space, but to shift to listen to your heart, not just the media or not just whoever is in authority, and not just with respect to this pandemic, but respect to everything you may be going through in life. Listen from your heart space, your heart of hearts, because we make this time here on this earth, on this planet, either a heaven or a hell for ourselves. Either we're in fear or we're in faith. And I'm opting and encourage others, inviting others to not be in fear, but to be in faith, trusting that there is a plan unfolding and that better things are on the way. And it's, again, not just for this pandemic and the lessons we are learning. It's for what has shown up in our lives in the past, is showing up now, and will continue to show up in the future. So yeah. there definitely is a need. Yes, definitely is a need for awakening. And this is the time to awaken. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to ask another question, and that is, how can I step into my power? You, you use the word power, but I would like to uh, the audience to understand what you mean about power. Okay, you'll answer that, and then I'm going to go to the question of live an empowered lifestyle with all the chaos and the uncertainty, and that is how people are living their lives right now. And do you do you agree? Do you think it should be that way? Well, again, it's a personal decision for everyone, but with respect to the power I'm talking about, stepping into our authentic power from within, and that is precisely our heart space, our our soul space, not just our head and what we're we're we've accumulated in our head and what others are telling us um, and have been telling us the mm. entire. So what you're talking about is maybe even the media. The media is, you know, making sure that people over and over and over understand what's going on from their perspective. And is their perspective correct? I mean, why do we have to listen? Some of it could be fake news. And if it's fake news, why are we listening to it? Well, here's the thing. We make the choice whether we listen to the media or anyone else. It's our choice. And if we are not used to being in our power, so to speak, then we are going to look outside of ourselves, outside of our intuition, outside of those inklings that we all have. And then we're listening to the media. And some of it is not correct. Information is information, but the spin oftentimes that, that's put on it uh, sensationalizes it, in my opinion, and moves those who are listening quite diligently into a fear mode rather than understanding that it is our responsibility and that we do have the power. We can be in control of ourselves. So imagine this. If everyone was in their power and did what was right for them rather than blindly being led, whatever uh, roads they are being led down, then they would become powerful within. In other words, they would feel that they can control what is emotionally happening to them. Once we control that heart space, then we begin to reap some rewards for that, to reap the peace rather than chaos, uh, to reap the creativeness that is also coming of this, and to be understanding, loving, and kind. If when you ask me why do why is there a need for such an awakening? Well, if there is, and there is a need for awakening, we could be a whole lot more loving and kind to each other. We could be still as well as doers. So 
So just to be and then understand what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And it's not just about stuff. This is what the awakening is, part of it for me anyway. Not just about stuff. And what we cannot stop is the clock. Can't stop the clock of life, as I refer to it. So the yeah. awakening is how how are we spending our time? If there's no right or wrong, and I'm not criticizing or judging anyone, but are we observing, whether it's through this or some other lesson that we have been sent to learn, how are we spending our time? Rhonda, um, there are so many different things that one can do, but of course we're in a, <laughs> in a moment of time that is making us you know, stay at home and um, just sort of contemplate, I was about to say contemplate our navel, but you know what? Mm-hmm. Um, if you could give our audience a list of things that they could do, to kind of them in a good space, in a good moment, in a time where they are feeling better, what would you give them, what would you say to them? Um, You know, I I would think, for example, that one of the things that they should do is listen to music, okay? Because music transforms people in all different ways. Another thing they should be doing is, you know, talking to a friend. Don't stay isolated. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, call a friend and see how they're doing. What about you, Rhonda? What what would you put on this list? Well, first thing on the list is to accept the invitation that the universe is giving to us to wake up and to develop a loving relationship with ourselves and others in the world, okay? And when we feel good about us, when we're practicing that self-care, which is the list that you're referring to now, whether it be music, I highly advocate music, I highly advocate being out in nature, whether it's a walk, whether it's sitting in your backyard listening to the birds, as well as doing something creative, painting, writing, speaking with a friend. That You're not isolated. We have all the digital equipment one could imagine. Call someone. Have them call you. Spend time on a, a video or a FaceTime, Uh, I do that with my grandchildren, and I do it with my clients as well. So the, the point is, when you're looking for a list, we must first accept the invitation to be more conscious of what's going on and to live an awakened rather than an isolated life. You know, many Mm -hmm. don't realize it, but isolation didn't just come from the pandemic. We become very tunnel vision-ish, and that's all we do. We isolate ourselves into the niches that we have carved for ourselves. We do not get out of our comfort zone at all in most cases, and really that's where life begins. So this is an opportunity to understand that we may have been isolated and living a life of default, settling for less, and now we have the opportunity to live by intention. And the things that you've mentioned and the things that I mentioned here are wonderful things with respect to making this shift to take inspired action. That That is our power. And to live an empowered lifestyle, which is, I think, what you're getting to, even in all this chaos and uncertainty, believe me, I am asked every single day, five times a day at least, how in the world do I live an empowered life with all this chaos and uncertainty? The answer is the same. Taking inspired action. Well, how do I take inspired action? Well, wake up, first of all. Accept the invitation that we are being given to wake up to a higher self. I call it my godling self. Pause. Just be. Reset. Understand that we have something better on the way. Personally. The world does, too. But understand it from your perspective. And there's a higher purpose for you just being here, going through the motions in tunnel vision, and really isolating yourself from yourself, your true self. Again, it's just not about stuff. Why, why is there why is there no toilet paper on the shelves of all things to be hoarded? Rhonda, let me ask you something. Is, go ahead. Um, what I would like to know is, was there re- there must be a reason that we're going through this pandemic? Is it a is the reason from your perspective that 
somehow people have to take the time to be with their families, take the time to just even speak a little bit to a friend, to a to a relative, to somebody of you know importance to us that we never did before because we're always in this frenzy of chaotic life, going to work in the morning, coming home, having to do all kinds of different things. I mean, I think that it is such a, an opportune time for people to sort of get off that digital, um, what should we call it, a, the digital race, if you will, and mm-hmm. now spend a little bit more time with the family and with friends. What's your thoughts about that? Well, I think you're absolutely correct. Um, With respect to what we should be doing, it's different for everyone. Okay. I think most people, if they really thought about it, they would understand that they have been isolating. They have been confined. And just what you're saying, that they're on like this wheel, like a little mouse, going around and around and around and really not even noticing what is important in their life. Oftentimes, you know, we don't notice things until they're not there, whether it's a person, place, situation, a circumstance, an event. So waking up will actually liberate us and to a more simple way of living. So what are we willing to give up or not? to bring us closer to a simpler and a more meaningful life? It's an important question because the shift is going to happen. You can either choose to shift or not. The shift is going to happen without any of us anyway. It's going to happen. So during this time, if we want to shift to something better for us, are we planting some seeds? You know, I I, I put it this way, Susan. Are we acquiring a new taste for life? If you look at the word taste, the mental faculty, taste is the mental faculty to discern or appreciate things for the joy that they bring us. Right now, we have an opportunity to explore and experience new pleasures, new tastes, a new way of being as well as doing. We are. This is an invitation and this is a blessing and it is a gift. Whether you agree with social distancing, whether you agree with the media, whether you agree with masks and gloves, it's all happening for our highest and best good or something better. Again, beginning right within us and right within our families, our communities, which ripples out to this planet. And we're all going through it together. So as bad as it is now, because it it is, so epic and it is so unprecedented and it is global, understand that the rewards will be just as great. It's like an investment. This is high risk. High risk. High risk investments produce high risk rewards. Okay? So Mm -hmm. do we want to look at it that way or do we want to continue to put our head in the sand and and do that? You know, it's It's so much easier sometimes to do that. My gosh, I'll have to make a change. I'll have to be more loving and kind. How? What is the definition of being loving and kind? Um, Let's not be full of it, okay? Let's be authentic and get to our authentic self and our authentic power, okay? Let's not be full of it and continue to hoard toilet paper. You know, and I hate (laughs) to put that so bluntly, but that's, that's exactly what comes to my mind you know, over the last several weeks. What are we doing? Why are we living in lack and why are we living in scarcity? We we have so much to be thankful for. The universe is a friendly place. Our world is a friendly place. And this, I would liken this episode to some tough love from the universe. We're getting some tough love right now. And we can accept it or we cannot accept. The shift is being made. Times are changing. They are changing for the better. Are we coming along for those changes for the better by doing the responsible thing and taking responsibility for how we feel, how we think, and what actions we take? Those are really, uh, Rhonda, words of wisdom, and I'm so pleased that you discussed this with our audience today. Um, Tell us, or tell our audience, rather, how, again, uh, they get your book, what the name of the book, how they 
how they can get it, and how they can reach you. Okay, great, Susan. I've been a contributing author to several books. However, uh, one book is America's Leading Ladies, the latest book, Who Positively Impact Our World. And in that publication, uh, which you can get on my website, Rhonda, at Help Me Rhonda Now is how you can reach me, and my website is helpmerondanow.com. Uh, I talk about having an Olympic mindset mm. and everything it takes to have an Olympic mindset. And we certainly need an Olympic mindset at this time. So let's take the opportunity to do just that. Um, I will be offering a course uh, in lifestyle empowerment, even in these times, and finding balance. Um, because there are people struggling with the chaos in the world. But it, it's called the Lifestyle Empowerment Club, and look for details on that coming soon, um, because I think it's something that our listeners would want to explore, not just for this pandemic time, but with respect to living an empowered life, not, again, not only through this pandemic, but above and beyond it when we are past well. Well, we've been talking to Rhonda Farah again, who has given you all the information and the education that you need during this time of the pandemic, and she wants you to even think about it afterwards, because whatever she's talking about has a very, very strong purpose. And I want to thank you, Rhonda Farah, for being on the Susan Brender Show. It's been a pleasure, as always. Likewise, Susan. Thank you, and uh Stay healthy, stay safe, have a magnificent and an extremely healthy day every day.